Australia, the ground zero of invasive species. New country slogan: Put it back where you found it. Animals such as the house cat, camel, water buffalo, cane toad, and European rabbit are all considered feral. What is a feral animal? You might ask. Well, they are animals which have been introduced to an area where they do not occur naturally and which have become wild. Most of the species imported have no natural predators in their new environment. Therefore, their population is not controlled by predation. There are 56 different types of vertebrate animals and 25,000 species of plants that have been introduced to Australia. But no other invasive species has plagued Australia as much as the European rabbit, the most overpopulated and abundant mammal in Australia today. Eh, stick there, shrub there. I don't eat that much. <laughs> Now I'll tell you what we do do a lot of: sex. Yep, lots and lots of sex. One female rabbit can have up to five litters a year. Each litter have four to six babies a year. That amount of rabbits can cause a prolific amount of soil erosion and land degradation. In an act of desperation, farmers attempted to take matters into their own hands. Oh, I love the rabbits. They're beautiful little creatures. They are. I could never imagine hurting them in any way. They're sensitive, you know. They have feelings, just like you and me. I could never imagine going to one of those awful rabbit drives. Where they beat those rabbits, I could beat those farmers with my own stick and give them what for. They are also one of the main causes of certain trees and animals to become extinct. The greater bilby, also named the rabbit-eared bandicoot, were forced out of their habitats and had to compete with invading rabbits to get food. Since the greater bilby was forced to relocate, predators such as the feral cats and foxes were able to kill a great deal of them. Many efforts are being made to conserve this endangered species.、Mm, they, they were everywhere.、Uh, they forced us out of our homes.、Oh, there was nothing I could do. It was a miracle I survived this long. Those damn rabbits! Combating the damage done by invasive species is calculated to have cost Australia $879 million a year on average. The damage caused by the rabbits alone is costing Australia $600 million annually. Several strains of viruses were used in an attempt to kill off the rabbit menace. Unfortunately, they were able to adapt and eventually become immune to it. In, uh, in... In 1951,、uh, scientists came up with this new strain of virus called uh, Maximus. Uh, uh, no, wait, Max Maxcotton.、Uh, no, Maximatosis. There we go. Me and my rabbit farm are in a virus-free zone, so my rabbits are safe and sound. That virus、uh, wiped out at least 600 million rabbits, though. Or things. Oh yeah, that was the absolute worst thing ever. I was vomiting nonstop for days. I think I lost a few pounds. Efforts to combat invasive species have been as varied and different as the animals and plants that are intended target. From government-sponsored bounties to horse-drawn poison carts. The government has done everything short in declaring war on native species considered to be a menace. After、uh, after World War One, I returned to Australia to farm,、uh, but it was difficult because of those darn ostrich.、Uh, they trampled my fences and killed most of my crops,、uh, and so by that time I was fed up. Other farmers and I petitioned the government for help, and the government responded. And oh, respond they did! Men with machine guns mowed down at least one thousand of them. 
Animals are not the only thing that can be invasive. Plants, like the prickly pear, were brought over as potted plants, but somehow got away to spread the countryside. Plants alone cost 3.5 billion annually to manage and combat. This also includes the imports of non-native insects. The government published an index of catalog nuisance plants as noxious weeds. Almost half those noxious weeds are garden plants. Is there a solution to all of this? Scientists like me are working with the government to try and figure out the best outcome with the least amount of consequences to all stakeholders. Hopefully, solutions can be found that don't involve importing more foreign species or the use of deadly and toxic chemicals.